and people sure enough die. And so it's important that uh, for, for the maximum health of society that we be smart, that we avoid the radiation, that we handle the problem correctly, but that we not get wrapped up in this disaster um, explosion where we think that, that everything's over and it's the end of the days. And, and what, what you need to do is you need to actually find good sources of information. Leo and I are talking about uh, hopefully doing a triangulation uh, with some nuclear scientists who can actually tell us you know, what is happening, what are the dangers, what are the risks, what do people actually need to be worried about. Uh, in the meantime, you know, once you start to educate yourself on what, uh, you know, the damages, what the real damages of radiation, what the levels are to be worried about, there are a lot of great resources online right now for finding out what the radiation is, not only in Japan, but elsewhere in the world. A live Geiger counter is at alttokyo.com, updates a graph uh, with data every 60 seconds. There's also a Ustream channel broadcasting the digital display of another Tokyo Geiger counter that's been uh, almost that's been crashing it's getting so many viewer emails uh, radiationnetwork.com is a crowdsourced radiation monitoring network of roughly a dozen or so unofficial monitoring sites around the United States so you got to take that into account it's very low number very unofficial uh, but it's updated every three minutes and you can participate in that by buying you know radiation detection equipment and going online that's not something everyone's going to do uh, this, but if you're but really into awesome. it that's a great way to learn about stuff this is the the bit torrenting of radiation research here when all of a sudden everybody for example uh their geigercounters.com is out of stock they say due to the disaster in japan orders for geiger counters has outstripped supply this is fantastic and again it's a case where the hyper-connected society we live in make possible large-scale experiments and and monitoring that never would have been possible even just 20 years ago during the chernobyl disaster all right, uh, let's Hi. let's move on to some of the uh, the first person accounts here. We got one voicemail to two six zero TNT show from Jason, telling us a little bit about what's going on in his area. Uh, look, this makes sense, and certainly if they're going to invest a lot of time and effort into doing Windows Phone, it would make sense that it can fill some of the same niche and have very Zoom like features to it. But you got to realize massive massive success uh, with Apple continuing to make iPods to this very day. Music players are far from dead, and you and I were talking about this earlier, Tom. You saw this as like, well, this isn't just the death of Zune, it's the death of iPods and music players. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I I, I think that Microsoft's doing exactly the right thing, and I, I actually got a chance to talk to Paul Thorat on Windows Weekly about this when Leo was out. Zune is a good brand, and even if they change the name, that team can continue to take what they've learned from Zune, but the idea of making a, a standalone device, I, I think that, that ship has sailed. Not that nobody will make them. I will continue to see iPod touches, and I think we'll continue to see iPod shuffle type devices from a, a wide variety of manufacturers uh, but that's that's not the game to be in right now well i would have agreed with you three months ago it was obvious to me that like uh, if there were what's smaller than a ipod nano and an ipod nothing when it's built into my iphone automatic automatically but i worked a high school event and i was shocked i did my full magic show i must have signed 60 standalone music players these are all kids who don't have computers they don't have laptops and they don't have um uh you know their phones they're not allowed to have phones at a certain age so instead they use the ipod touch as their primary way to contact and interact with people i get emails from people all over the world about the scam school show asking for advice or suggesting a trick all of them at the bottom say sent for my ipod touch uh. i think i think there's a very robust market for music players, and I think for whatever reason, they under -marketed. How many Zunes did you sign? Well, and that's just it. And uh, obviously, there's, there's a reason that the Zune is dead. How many Creative but Labs did you sign? It's a bummer because the Zune HD, by all accounts, was a great device. Yeah. And I loved what Zune was trying to do with a flat fee access to dozens of thousands of songs to explore music that you would never otherwise encounter. Which is uh, not going away, by the way.